Hello, my name is Raziel Cohen from ndftraining.com. I'm making this video because we've been receiving a huge amount of questions of people asking how they'll be able to survive during these crazy times, during these riots, during these protests, and they're trying to figure out what they're able to do. So we kind of wanted to put this video together, not very formally, just giving a bunch of points of things that we're able to give, give out just to see if we're able to help out some people uh, in things and questions that they were having. So I put it together a list of bullet points of different things that we thought of. Um, this is all obviously all my opinion. You don't need to follow anything I say. I'm also not a lawyer, so don't take any of this as legal advice. This is just what we think are a few important things that you should know that could potentially help you out. So the first thing that we're telling people, uh, we're gonna kind of split this video up into two, two sections. The first section is going to be talking about people who are not armed and are not interested in confrontation. The second group is gonna be for people who are armed and planning on staying in their homes and defending it. So for those who are in the first category, um, the first thing I'd recommend is putting, putting together a go bag. A go bag is just things that are in your house that are very important to you, that are very difficult to replace. So something like your passport, medications that you might need, uh, food for your kids. So if you take these bags and go, if your neighborhood's getting overrun, if you have no time to be able to leave um, without taking all the things you'd want, having a bag of all your priorities together so you're able to just grab it and go is extremely important so you don't forget those items. Um, think of a place to drive to and think of considering maybe staying there for a few days if things are very out of control. Uh, we've already had a few people that reached out to us that said they just went to a hotel in a different area just so they could avoid all the chaos of what's going on. Um, as well as also have alternative routes of how to get to that place so you don't get stuck in the madness and not sure what to do next if you get in, stuck into a place where they're blocking off or there is police um, blocking off that area. Just have alternative routes. Um, with that being said, also make sure that your gas tank is full. You don't want to be able to drive only for a mile or two and then realize you have to fill up and you're in a bad area. So make sure that you have gas in your gas tank. Um, try to avoid highways. The reason why I recommend this is because a highway either goes this way or that way. So if you're stuck and there's a protest in front of you, you can't really go, you're probably gonna have to abandon your car. Versus if you're going on a street, you at least have uh, alternative directions that you're able to go, so you're less likely to get trapped. Um, this is also a point of a lot of people People were asking us about pepper spray. Um, this is the time we made a video in the past talking about the different types of pepper spray. Um, this is when we'd recommend getting fog. Fog is more of a burst in a large direction, which means if you have multiple people in front of you, you'll be able to get more of them at once. Uh, versus if you had something like stream, it's more made for personal defense with a one-on-one -on -one situation. So that's probably what I'd recommend going towards uh, for now. Uh, and then also, Take all this into account of how you feel and how chaotic everything is going and think about considering for the future getting a firearm. So start the process now, especially if you're in a place like California or New York, where the process could take a really long time to actually be able to obtain it. Um, you could also reach out to us to ask for help. We'll help you through that process. Um, look to start going through that process so in the future you have a more um, powerful way of defending you and your family. If you're a person who plans on staying in your, in, in your home and defending your home and you're not planning on leaving your community, that's totally fine, but here are a few things you'd want to take into consideration as well. Uh, first of all, preload your magazines, because if you're going to be sitting there thinking that you'll be able to individually load your magazines while things are starting to begin, that's a really, really bad idea. We'd very highly recommend all the magazines that you have and all the firearms you think you'd be using that would be potentially used for personal defense, have those magazines loaded and ready to go, so you don't want to start individually filling them up. Um, have a few fire extinguishers available because if people start throwing things like Molotov cocktails or any type of flammable item, you don't want to be stuck in your house while the whole thing is burning down. Have a, a way to be able to put those things out. Um, if you have multiple people in your house that are trained um, and you live, let's say, on a street corner, have it stationed in a way that you guys could have a larger view of what's going on so you could see more of what's happening. Or if you live on a simple street, maybe do shifts so you guys won't be totally exhausted if you're trying to do it throughout the night. Um, um, in that case, it also might be a good idea to consider getting uh, simple two-way radios so you can make sure that you're both in the loop of everything that's going on. Um, and lastly, make sure in both cases, whether you're a person that's planning on leaving or staying, make sure you have medical equipment with you, uh, including uh, water to wash out your eyes or some kind of liquid that you could wash out your eyes because if you get hit by pepper spray, that's going to be something you really want to deal with as soon as you can, as well as also basic, if you have the knowledge for basic trauma equipment or cuts or bruises or things like that, um, that's definitely something you want to have on hand because people are doing a lot of really crazy things and you really don't want to have to avoid going through all these situations and dealing with all these different people. Um, all medical services and law enforcement are very 
very much taken up during these circumstances. So the more you're able to be independent, the better. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to help you in any way that we can. You can go to our website, ndftraining.com. Send us a message, message there if you need our help. Uh, or you could also go to our Instagram or Facebook at ndftraining and reach out to us as uh, to reach out to us there as well. Um, thank you very much. Stay safe.